Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Taylor and I own my own personal training business in Dallas. And I am also training to become a dog behaviorist. And I am super excited because I am going to start filming some of the stuff that I've been learning with dog training and I am just over the moon. I don't know why I'm out of breath right now. I haven't done much, but we will need our model. Let me get him. Marlon. Yes, good boy. Oh, hi girl. <laughs> okay, it's a party. So today I think that we are gonna work on some place work and place is great because this is a place where your dog can go to decompress. This is a place where your dog can go to kind of chill out, stay, focus on being independent and building confidence while you are walking around doing your daily chores and duties and not having a Velcro dog stuck to you. And as humans, we all need a place or a little area that we go to to decompress. And that is a placemat or a bed, dog bed or crate for a dog. So highly recommend getting something that's elevated if you are wanting to have a placemat for your dog. And this is because if the placemat is elevated, your dog has to be fully on it and can't be laying half on the floor, half on the bed. And there's so much stuff that we can do with place. Also, I love, love, love place. How many times can I say place? I love place because when you have guests come in or out, when the doorbell rings, when people are walking past your gate and your dogs want to bark, this is a place where you can go put them on their designated area and they can kind of calm down, decompress, and you can invite them off when they're calm. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and show you the first couple steps into teaching your dog place. The leash that we're gonna be using today is actually called a slip lead. The bigger loop goes underneath the jaw and right behind the ears, and this is great because you're going to be able to communicate with your dog a little bit better and safer, rather than having a collar like pulling on the dog's trachea. Also, I want to say that I am interning in a dog behavioral internship in Dallas, so I'm still learning. Like I said at the beginning, I'm still training. I will leave all of my dog training internship information and my mentor's information down below, and hopefully you can join the team or join whatever team that you can to get into the industry, because it's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Marlon come. Marlon loves place. But we're gonna pretend like he doesn't know place. The first step into introducing this command to your dog is to not say anything and just help them onto the platform and then guide them off and do that a couple times. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to gently guide Marlon. but once he goes on, I'm gonna release the tension. Ah, ah, we don't want the dogs chewing on the leash. I don't know if you saw that. We don't want the dogs chewing on the leash because if they do chew on the leash, they can potentially detach themselves from the part of the leash that you have in your hand and that is so not safe. If you have a dog that runs, that dog is gone. So if you do catch your dog biting on the leash, snap, say ah, ah, say shh. Do whatever you need to do to get them to stop. Okay. Well, shh. Good boy. Awesome. Okay, got that down. So we are gonna go ahead and introduce the word place. And I'm only gonna say place when all four paws are on the place board. Place. Good. Now let's say that our dogs are 
really comfortable with place or as comfortable as they can be after introducing a new command. And now we're gonna work on the three Ds. Some trainers have four Ds. I've heard three Ds and four Ds, but I'll tell you all four and then you can kind of run with it. The three Ds are duration, distance, distraction, and different. So duration is how long can I get my dog to stay on place before they walk off themselves and I have to guide them back on. So with Marlon, he's pretty solid. I can drop the leash, walk around, and this is something that you can do too. Just go ahead and walk around. If your dog does get up from place, go ahead and just gently guide your dog back onto place. And to be honest with you, you don't have to drop the leash immediately. Let's just focus on strengthening the duration of how long your dog's on place. And it's totally okay. Some dogs are on place for 30 seconds. Some dogs can be on place for five minutes. Some dogs can be on place for a couple hours. Now we're gonna go ahead and focus on distance. So what I'm gonna do now, it would be appropriate to go ahead and drop the leash. And I'm just gonna go ahead and walk away. I'm gonna to come towards y'all. Awesome. So this is ideally what you want. If your dog were to have gotten up, you would just gently guide them back on the place, drop the leash, and go ahead and walk slowly back. Now we've got distraction. This is where you can get your entire family or whoever you're with to go around and just make noise. Try to mentally exercise your dog by having them think, okay, I have to stay on here. I have to stay on here. Staying on place is definitely a mental exercise for your dog. So this is great if you aren't able to give them as much exercise in a day as you're normally used to doing. He is my star pupil. <laughs> He's doing so good. So what I would do is, you know, I would maybe pop my hand, my sink is over there, so I would turn on and off the sink. I would open and close the fridge. I would do all of these things. I would, you know, bang on whatever I could. Just distract and just try to, you know, open and close the door. Walk out of your door, walk back into your house. Things like that and really challenge your dog to stay on place. Really, really, really works the brain and your dog is going to be mentally exhausted after 45 minutes to an hour. So then you've got different, and different is something that is really cool because you can move your place boards around the house in different rooms, and with dogs, they may be really good in the kitchen with commands, but then you put them in your bedroom, and they're terrible with commands. You can have your dog be really great at commands in the house, but then you go outside to the park and they're terrible at commands. So different is training your dog in different situations, taking the place forward and putting it in different places, having different environments that you're training in. I highly suggest, I purchased this off of Wayfair. I can link it in the description box below if I can find it. And if not, I know that there's one similar on Amazon. Mine is an extra large, so it can hold both of my dogs that are 70 pounds, but it really just depends on what you need. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'm happy to help you with the best of my knowledge so far, and I hope that I can bring more fun and quick training tips and tricks with my pups to you. And until next time, we will see you next time. Bye.